Hey everybody, it's Ron and Debbie, and we're back for another edition of Ask Ron. All right, Ron, our first question is from David and Reiko okay. from Michigan. We have been sending out our own yellow letters to owners of expired and unconditionally withdrawn property addresses. Yes. On average, the response rate has been at around 35%. Wow. So far, so good. Wow. By the same token, the returned mail rate has also been relatively high at 5%. We assume that many of them simply left the premises. How do we best deal with them, if at all, do we disregard? Well, first thing you do is you contact your list provider and you tell them that you're having a high return rate. But honestly, 5% is acceptable in the direct mail industry because you're using a compiled list and it's probably not updated since it's just homeowners. Uh, the, tell, and, and the list broker usually will do a make good. If you get an, a, a high uh, return like that, at least they'll give you more names, but they won't pay for your postage. So. Uh, deal it deal directly with them and if you don't like your results change your list uh, brokers and and uh, try to get a list that's more updated I think at the very least tell him or her I don't want a list that's more than 90 days old and that will eliminate your 5% return rate okay all right and they have another question also uh, let me finish on that one okay 35% is an outstanding uh, call return I would like to know how many what percentage of the total have houses for sale though that would be something that maybe you could email Debbie for us but that's really really good now I caution you now sending out yellow letters is great I know we created them right here in this building but are you calling Fizbo's if you have a VA calling Fizbo's you probably don't need to spend that money on those yellow letters just a thought okay and another question from David and Rico is when the caller and his or her ex do not see eye to eye on anything at all the War of the Roses. <laughs> and the ex wants cash out of the deal and nothing else. Is there a good way to make a deal happen? Uh-uh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't get these two together. And if you're not going to get them together, I don't know that you want to be in the middle of it anyway. Because if one of them wants cash and nobody's going to sway them, there's nothing to do about it. Because you can't get them cash. Period. Okay. Leave them the offer and let them fight it out. And when the time is right, they might come back to you. All right. Okay, next question is Richard Hewitt, and this is regarding affiliate training. And Richard's from Michigan also. Okay. Okay, in the affiliate training module, you mentioned we should get our own domain name. Can we just use the link generated from the affiliate site in our internet marketing, or do we need to obtain our own URL? You can use the link if the only way you're going to get a response is for them to press on that link. Then it doesn't matter. But if you're going to actually force somebody to type in a URL through maybe offline advertising, that kind of thing, then you better get a simpler URL. And I, I think that answers your question. Um, you, um, there are all kinds of other applications, but I think that's enough to um, clarify. If, it, if, it, if it's no inconvenience on my part to respond to your link, then your link's fine. Okay. All right. Next question is from Pollyann Sorkin, and she is from Minnesota. She said, hi Ron, go ahead, twist the knife again. We had a 22 inch snowstorm in my area of Minnesota this oh, past week. So sorry. So <laughs> she sorry. Said you want me to look at, uh, find you a house? That's what she said. Your offer to find okay. a nice home in Florida is looking better and better. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Tell her, tell her what the temperature is down here today, Debbie. Oh my She's gosh, what is it, like 85, 83? Oh, 80, like about that? 80. It's, it's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, Absolutely beautiful. gorgeous. Yeah, I just had lunch out on the patio at my restaurant. In a short sleeve, sure. <laughs> Very nice. Now, but I wouldn't twist a knife or anything like that. <laughs> Ron would never do that. No. Okay. You explain in the optional letter of intention to the ax homeowner that his monthly payments will begin until won't begin until so many days after the lease option 30. tenant buyer is located. Thirty. Okay. Approved by the homeowner and the lease option between the homeowner and investor is assigned to the lease option tenant buyer. But the ax possession lease agreement has no such language. Unless I'm missing something under that agreement, the investor is legally bound to start making payments if he doesn't find an N. You're only missing one thing, and that's called Exhibit A, where that is dealt with. In your lease agreement, go to the Exhibit A that has to do with an ax deal, and you'll see we put that language down at the bottom under uh, payment and or term. Okay. And if you can't find that, then let us know and we'll send you a copy of it. Uh, right out of our new boot camp manual. Uh, you may or may not have that because it hasn't been that long ago I created it, but we're happy to send you one. Okay, Pollyanne's other question, uh, which you have in front of you, Ron, regarding uh, Exhibit A, 
She has a question on the signature page, and this again deals with the Axe Possession and Lease Agreement. Um, all right, she she's confused. She's looking for clarification. She's confused. All right, uh, real estate purchase option agreement. Uh, so I'm looking at the option agreement, and it's Exhibit C. It's separate from the lease agreement, and she's confused because there's uh, several names on here, but if you look over at the left, you'll see they're just witnesses. There's only two parties. There's an option E and an option OR, and the rest of them are just witnesses to the left. Look at the top. It says signed and delivered in the presence of. That makes them witnesses. So don't let that confuse you. Right. So there are not extra lease or something. She, no. Okay. She was also confused about the... Um, Lease agreement itself. Actually, it was the same question, though. Right. Because there's so many names on there. On I the signature pages. Pull out names out of the air for witnesses. <laughs> Ignore them. And the reality is you don't even need witnesses on here. This is going to be signed. Uh, when you're putting a tenant buyer in the house, they're going to sign in front of an attorney. Witnesses are irrelevant to you. And even if you go into the home and get one signed by the seller, you still don't have to have witnesses on here. I just, you know, the blanks were there. I had to put something in them. <laughs> okay, Ron, that's all we have. All right, see you guys next week. Have you signed up for the convention yet? <laughs> have you signed up for the convention yet? If you have not signed up,